Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Steven Roth, and I'm a board-certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. And on today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting case that required us to receive some help from a very unexpected place, Reddit. But first, let's get into the disclaimer, and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may be a part of, and also that this video is not intended for medical advice and is for educational purposes only. Should you have any concerns about your oral health, please see your nearest oral health care provider. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today's interesting case is a man in his sixth or seventh decade that reported to my boss's clinical practice, and this man has a history of four primary cancers. A cancer in his colon, his stomach, his kidney, and now bilateral lungs, which recently recurred. He reported with a chief complaint of pain and swelling of his palate, and that history alone is, is a little bit worrisome for metastatic disease, which we do see in the oral cavity. First, let me say that my boss is an amazing pathologist and a kind, kind person. Because I am newer to the practice, we do share an office, and I have the privilege of working beside him both literally and metaphorically. So when my boss went to examine this patient and he saw the interesting findings, he was sure to come grab me uh, so that I can take a look and take some pictures. And this is what we saw. You can't really appreciate the swelling in this picture, but it was definitely swollen, erythematous, which means red and inflamed, and it looked focally ulcerated with a firm rolled border. All features really worrisome, even without the history of multiple cancers. However, when we palpated the lesion, we noticed that white spot that you see kind of in the middle of that rolled border was hard. My boss grabbed a pair of forceps and tried to get under it, thinking maybe something was stuck in there like a fishbone, which we do see from time to time. Instead, this is what he was able to pull out. The patient instantly felt relieved. The swelling went down tremendously, and this was clearly the cause of the swelling and pain. But what was this thing? We had no clue. Here's the thing about most pathologists. We love a good mystery. And the best cases are the unique ones that require a little bit of work to get to the bottom of. And it was very clear that this case was going to require that. Since no one really knew what this thing was, I suggested to my boss that maybe we try to post it on Reddit. And full disclaimer, I'm not a huge Reddit user, but for some reason I remember stumbling across the subreddit, what is this thing? And I thought, you know, maybe we could crowdsource an answer that could tell us what was going on in this patient. Uh, so I took the specimen down to our grossing hood and uh, like the good pathologist that I am, I made sure to measure it and fully document it. I took a few pictures for the post and then I got ready to post it on Reddit. So around lunchtime, I posted on that subreddit thinking, you know, maybe we'll get our answer. And at first we got a few suggestions like a candle wick or dental materials. Uh, one user even suggested a COVID swab, which was very interesting. Uh, this patient didn't have a history of a recent COVID test. And even so, most COVID tests were done in the nasal mucosa or nasopharynx mucosa, not the oral mucosa, and especially not the soft palate. But then, less than 13 hours later, user FTDMFR gave us our answer. I clicked on the link in the post, and the link took me to this website, which was an ENT from Connecticut, that explained this pillar procedure in great detail, including how it is implemented, and bam, there it was, a picture of our mystery item. Reddit solved our mystery and in just over half a day. The following day, we called the patient to confirm that the patient knew he had a history of sleep apnea, and he did admit that he had a procedure about 10 years ago that involved his palate, but had forgotten and didn't put together that that might be what we removed from his palate. And his lesion, by the way, completely resolved and he was completely out of pain. We were completely unfamiliar with the sleep apnea treatment and 
As dentists, we do have some familiarity with sleep apnea. A quick word on sleep apnea, apnea means no breathing. So it's the stoppage of breathing while asleep. Many people equate snoring as automatically diagnostic of sleep apnea, and that isn't the case. Sleep apnea is actually a very complex diagnosis, and snoring is a part of that. There are many different methods of screening for sleep apnea. The one that I am most familiar with and use in my practice and used in my training and dental school is the STOP BANG score. And STOP BANG is an acronym that stands for snoring, tiredness, observed apnea, meaning that someone has observed the patient uh, that has stopped breathing in their sleep, P for pressure, so a high blood pressure, B for BMI, that's a BMI over 35 kilograms per meter squared, age over 50, N neck size, and G gender, males being the most common uh, patients with sleep apnea. Any patient with high risk for sleep apnea after the screening tools should undergo a sleep study, which is an extensive study that where the patient is observed in their sleep and hooked up to many monitors to examine their uh, sleeping patterns, their breathing patterns, and the number of times that they stop breathing in their sleep. So how do you treat sleep apnea? The treatment is just as complex as the diagnosis, and there are a lot of different ways to treat it. Most patients start with a CPAP machine, a continuous positive airway pressure machine, where they wear this mask that uh, forces air in through the patient's airways, creating a continuous positive pressure, keeping their airways open and patent. There are other ways to manage sleep apnea, including a appliance, kind of like a night guard, where the patient wears an appliance at night that kind of forces their airways open and their jaw forward. There are also surgical methods that are usually reserved for the more severe patients, like the UPP, or uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, where part of the palate and the uvula are removed to also open the airway. Well, apparently, the pillar procedure is also a recognized treatment for sleep apnea. The pillar procedure, as we learned, is the insertion of these tiny implants, usually in threes, uh, that causes fibrosis or scarring of the palate, which causes the palate to lift, thereby opening the airway. This is usually reserved for more mild or even more moderate cases and not severe cases. Just like any procedure, there are risks and benefits, and we discovered one of the risks, and that is rejection of the implant, where the implant gradually works its way out of the tissue over time, causing inflammation and soreness. Big shout out to the subreddit, what is this thing, and user FTDMFR for solving this mystery for us. I hope that you found this case as interesting as we did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any more interesting, rare, or crazy cases from my files. Thanks for watching, and be well.